Hey everybody, welcome to the top 10 upcoming RTS games of 2017. Now this will be an upcoming RTS games list. I don't know if these games will actually be good or not. I'm just making guesses and kind of like showing off games that I'm mostly excited for in the year of 2017. So let's get right into it. <laughs> In the face. First on our list would be Sudden Strike 4 developed by Kite Games. Now, Sudden Strike is a World War II franchise which has elements of realism attached to all of their games. So, for example, you gotta worry about the direction units are facing. Anyway, I'm pretty excited because this is finally an RTS game without the without Relic Entertainment. Although I love Relic Entertainment, I do want to see more companies sort of like bring out new RTS games and all that stuff. And when Blitzkrieg 3 being the way it is, I can't wait to see how this one turns out. In the face. Now, up next would be Syrian Warfare, developed by Katsuplay. Now, Syrian Warfare is interesting in that it's a modern day RTS game, and those aren't really that common actually. The only series I can think of that does modern day RTS games would be probably War Game, of course, World in Conflict. And in this game, they are going for a very realistic approach, right? There will be no base construction, there'll be no units, there'll be no health bars, ammunition and fuel is also limited, which is pretty interesting. I guess that means that vehicles are more of a rarity and then the focus is on infantry combat. And also on top of this, the buildings are completely destructible, meaning that we could see battlefield levels of destructibility in an RTS game. So be a myriad of different things to take into account like smoke screens infantry lifted by helicopters reinforcements that you can call in since you can't build uh units or base construction you can also capture units and equipment a bunch of cool stuff actually i'm pretty excited for the level of complexity that this game is kind of showing off now whether or not we'll be able to actually see this in question is up for debate honestly maybe they'll take out certain game mechanics or maybe they'll just keep everything in i'm honestly pretty excited the problem is that much like the a lot of these games over here there's not a lot of footage of syrian warfare however what i have seen is so far pretty damn good and i think the game looks fantastic in the face next on our list would be art of war red tides now art of war red tides is a very interesting rts game it's extremely simple it's inspired from desert strike which is a starcraft 2 mod which has you send down units a lane in order to destroy a nexus that um, each of the players holds right and along the way there are turrets that can help you defend against incoming armies and all that good stuff you get income in this game by upgrading your mines and as the waves progress you can upgrade your mines to give you more and more resources to pump out more units all that goods um, the game is like I said, extremely simple. There are three factions to choose from with a variety of different units. You have the nature focus faction, an alien focus faction, and then like a human focus faction that has like medieval um, weaponry as well as mixed in with some high tech sci fi weaponry as well. I gotta say, what drew me into this game was the art style, particularly with the commando unit. That shit was fucking cool. And I kind of do like the fact that they've taken the Desert Strike approach, added in a bunch of fucking more units into the mix, and uh, so far from what I've played the gameplay is solid and I could see a lot of complexity come into what units people bring onto the table and how you counter those um, Is there a numbers game involved like oh hey Maybe I just need 40 of these type of units that are really weak to counter like one really strong unit And then you know you sort of uh, play like a little bit of a card game with your opponents while also coordinating with your allies in these 3v3 battles I sort of want to see the game developed a little bit more so far from a simple RTS game it kind of hits the nail on the coffin but i want to see a little bit more development more armies more units just a lot more stuff honestly in the face next on our list would be kingdoms and castles developed by lion shield now this game is inspired by sim city banish and stronghold where you take a small little hamlet and grow it out to become a city and an opposing castle all that good stuff but you gotta defend it against viking raiders natural elements of the world i think that's pretty cool i'm kind of a little bit disappointed that a lot of these city simulation games we've been getting don't have any combat associated with them so to see a city simulation game i'll be a medieval city simulation game have some combat is pretty cool hopefully the combat in question is enjoyable to play around with and not something that's tacked on after the fact. This will apparently be a randomly generated world, much like Banished, so we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, hopefully there are different modifiers and different factions that you get to fight off against and all that stuff. Looking pretty forward to this. Kind of am a little bit worried about which game they're going to take most of the influence from. Are they going to take it from Stronghold, Banished, SimCity? It's obviously not going to be an even split and I want to see where this game leads on the most, but I do want to see more medieval RTS games. I'll say that much because the amount of sci-fi and sci-fi rts games we've been getting is kind of a little bit insane 
in the face. Okay, next would be Northgard, developed by Shiro Games. This is an RTS game based on Viking mythology. It's all about you settling down and building up a town center and then expand your empire much the same way as Rise of Nations, actually. You just sort of build up, conquer territories, use mythological creatures to beat up your opponents, manage your resources, all that good stuff. It's pretty cool. You can assign your Vikings to do a variety of different jobs like farmers, warriors, sailors, lore masters, whatever those are, and all that good stuff. There are also harsh winters to sort of take into account as well so maybe you'll be finding your opponents and all of a sudden blizzard and that completely fucks you over there are different wind conditions as well which is pretty interesting like conquest fame lore trading so i'm pretty excited for this because of obviously the fact that finally another game that isn't a sci-fi rts that's pretty good uh, also on top of this i do like age of mythology and i obviously love the fact that they're able to take mythology put it into a historical setting as well and also the fact that there are different victory conditions could make games a little bit more interesting than just kill everybody <laughs> in the face. Next on our list would be Empires Apart, developed by Destiny Bit. Now, this is an RTS game that takes a lot of inspiration from that of Age of Empires 2, but kind of um, expands upon it a little bit more. Now, each of the factions have unique units that make them separate from each other. However, on top of this, the unit, the factions in question have unique traits that expand upon these differences a little bit more. For example, the Aztecs, they don't develop technologically through normal means like in Age of Empires 2 with buildings and age ups. They instead have units technologically advanced through combat so as a unit fights it becomes more and more powerful and i don't know how many unique units will be available for each of the factions but so far from what we've been shown it's been one unique unit for each of the factions however they might expand upon this a little bit more something to also take a note a note about is the uh, uh, kind of the roles that each of the factions play now different factions have different uh fields that they excel in some can rush some can turtle etc etc and then you can add variants upon these aspects of the civilizations that make them a little bit more interesting as well like for example you can add on a variant which can improve infantry but weaken navy and a bunch of other factors that can be changed around as well on top of this hero units can be built at a town center however once you build them and they die they can never be rebuilt and they have a passive and active ability now to be empires apart pretty excited for the game they've done a lot of updates for the game uh it's come a long way and i am really excited to see what what will be the finished product in the face Next on our list would be Dawn of War 3, developed by Relic Entertainment. Now, I'm pretty excited for this game. I love the fact that they're bringing in massive battles. I love the fact that they're bringing in base building. I'm sort of a little bit miffed on the whole elite units thing, as I feel like that could be exploited for microtransactions. But if they keep the elite units free and easily obtainable, then I will love this game. Essentially, this is a game that takes place in the Warhammer 40k universe with the Eldar, the Orcs, and the Space Marines. I love the fact that in this game, they expand upon the differences of the factions a little bit more, creating like completely different uh, game mechanics that none of the other factions can um, sort of or actually uh, replicate so for example the space marines have drop pods and then the orcs have the ability to use scrap that is destroyed on the battlefield and destroyed vehicles and units and all that stuff and turn it into upgrades for their pre-existing units or create completely new units out of these upgrades that's always pretty cool and uh, some of the Eldar stuff I also find a little bit interesting, like kind of the focus on mobility, how vehicles can traverse over cliffs without having to use any abilities at all. These differences were also in Dawn of War 2 and 1, but I think they've expanded upon it a little bit more to make the factions, I guess, a little bit more fleshed out. Now, next would be the fact that they've also reworked resources a little bit more by having it focused more on the resource nodes than on buildings. For example, in Dawn of War 1, you had to capture a strategic point in order to get requisition, and then you have to build power generators in order to get power. Instead, the power generators and the requisition are mixed in with the resource nodes. So map control is a lot more important in the game. Now, beforehand, I was a little bit more miffed on it. However, as I was thinking about it more and more, I actually came to appreciate it a lot more. Considering that I like the fact that it forces you to play aggressively and you can't turtle, which I find interesting. But again, the elite units kind of bother me because of the fact that it could be easily exploitable. And not being able to spam as many Terminators as I want is always, like, a little bit of a downer, which is unfortunate to say the least. Uh, I'm not really a big fan of the maps and their visuals. I find the forest map to be good, but the ice planet to be completely revolting. It's too bright. Something also I've noticed is the fact that instead of the normal selection thing that comes for, from, like, all RTS games, where if you select the unit, there's a circle underneath it, there's a silhouette. There's an outline around all of the units that you select in Dawn of War 3. It is so annoying because it changes the health bars of the units. And then also on top of this, it just creates like a white outline. I want to see the model. I don't want to see the fucking like white outline. It kind of annoys me to see that actually. I hope they remove it. But 
Besides a couple of niggling issues, I'm not really too worried about the cartoony art style. I'm not really too worried about the lore breaking aspect. I just want to play the game because from what I'm seeing so far, it looks pretty good, but there are some issues that I do have with it that need to be sort of like fixed out. In the face. Next on our list would be Halo Wars 2 developed by Creative Assembly. I feel like I'm cheating here because I've played the game so much, but essentially it's a very simple RTS game made for the consoles and finally is playable on the PC. Now essentially there's no free base building, you have these nodes and, you, and then you can construct buildings on top of them and then you can create units and it's very simple as well as the balance is sort of centered around rock paper scissors gameplay with infantry being able to kill this unit which is able to kill that unit which the other unit will be able to kill infantry in, and kind of like complete that um, triangle so to speak. Now there are two factions, the banished and then on top of this the UNSC. The Banished are sort of an offshoot of the Covenant who reject the Covenant's ways and are followed by a leader known as Atriox. And I believe on top of this there are a variety of different units that separate the Banished from that of the Covenant counterparts. As well as, you know, aesthetic differences that make the Banished a little bit more oomphy, so to speak. Keeping in line with, I guess, uh, brute art and all that stuff. Now, there are a variety of different game modes that Halo Wars 2 has access to, like Blitz Mode, which is more for the casual RTS player where you can just like drop cards out on the field and then a unit will pop out obviously i'm not really a fan of this kind of mode but the fact that it's there would mean that i it kind of like appeals to a wide variety of different people which i think is more of the mantra of halo wars 2 but if you've ever played halo wars 1 it's honestly more of the same this is a very safe game it doesn't take a lot of like huge deviations from the predecessor the only differences would be the art style the fact that there are more game modes the larger unit pool and then on top of this uh, I believe the um, the factions are a little bit different in terms of how they're balanced. So, for example, beforehand, the UNSC's units were par for par better than the Covenant's units. And to compensate for that, the Covenant can have a larger, like, army um, size. So, maybe now that's been changed up a little bit. I'll have to see later on as I haven't really had any, like, on-hand knowledge of how traditional games are going to go down in Halo Wars 2. Besides that, I'm pretty stoked to see how the story goes and how things go as well. It's a very simple RTS game, so there's not much to really talk about as the base building has been simplified a lot. The counters themselves are not as hidden as uh, certain other RTS games. In the face. Next on our list would be Tooth and Tail, developed by Pocket Watch Games. Now, Tooth and Tail is very interesting in that it's a very simple RTS game. You have your hero unit, and then the hero unit can construct certain farms in order to get resources, and then you can construct unit buildings in order to um, get out units. These unit buildings automatically construct the units, and then you can rally these units in order to fight for your side. Uh, these units don't need to be microed at all, in fact they can't be microed, and what you have to do is drag your hero unit onto the front lines of your enemy's base, and then you try and duke it out and fight each other. It has a very animal farm kind of vibe going on with it, with uh, certain animal races being represented in the game, like foxes and lizards, snakes, all that good stuff. And on top of this, before the start of every single game, you can choose which army you want to send out onto the field without any microtransactions attached to any of the units. So you can choose whether or not you want an army that's more late game focused on flyers or maybe you want a late, an early game army focused on exploding frogs and all that stuff. The choices are really yours and the customization is really cool. I find the game to be simple but because of the different types of units attached to it there's a little bit more complexity attached to the game and even though there's no micro involved with any of the units I find army um, kind of picking your fights and knowing which where your position is and understanding how your opponent's army works and how your army works makes it so that the game has a little bit more strategy involved with it than um, other simplified RTS games. I'm excited for it. I hope to see it soon on the on Steam. In the face. All right, my final pick for upcoming RTS game of 2017 will be Iron Harvest. Now, this is a game that ha should have no right to ever actually top a top 10 upcoming RTS games of 2017 list, considering that there's very little information on the game. But what I've seen so far has grabbed me by the balls, so to speak. Now, this is a diesel punk mech game where if you don't know what diesel punk is, it's essentially an alternate history universe that's focused more on diesel fuel and how that has kind of developed history as well as technology and all that stuff, much in the same vein as steampunk. 
The cool thing about this is that they also have mechs in the game as well. Obviously, mechs and diesel punk will always pique my interest a little bit more. Another focus would be the fact that the game has Company of Heroes levels of gameplay. These are shown a little bit in some of the screens that I'll be pulling up right now. But essentially, you have squads of infantry that sort of duke it out like a traditional, you know, standard Company of Heroes game. There are hero units that have like weird wacky stuff like, for example, a bear companion for one of the hero sniper units. And then on top of that, you have mech suits that are fighting each other and all that shit. That is so fucking hype. I've always wanted to have more games that incorporate the gameplay of Company of Heroes, but put a unique spin on it. And as you can probably tell, my favorite two RTS games to come out this uh, next year will be two very original games, um, of course, Tooth and Tail, and then finally Iron Harvest. And I'm personally excited to see more new ideas come out of the woodworks. And Diesel Punk mech suits are always my fa my favorite. So here's hoping that the game will be able to kind of institute the same game mechanics as Company Furos, maybe apply some base building, and hopefully the mech gameplay and the infantry battles are massive and really really fun to play around with but anyway that will be my list for top 10 rts games of 2017 if you enjoyed this um list you can leave a like and tell me what you think of 2017's rts games what are you excited for see you guys next time Bye bye